In this materials list video, we'll cover using formulas in a materials list. In this sample plan, let's start with creating a materials list for all floors. Inside of the materials list, I'm going to come over on the extra column and just double click. When I double click, you're going to see a few icons above the field. You can access a few of these. The top one is a macro, insert macro. There are object defined macros, there are object specific macros, and then for the parent object, there are macros that you can insert. All of these have values depending on the object you're working with. You can insert and then run a calculation. For the formula, this is applied to the line item, which means we can use math on the line item, and then it can be applied to the object source. I'll show you the difference of that once I get to the point where I'm going to use the object source. Most of these I'll just be using the line item, which means working with the price, extra, or count. For the extra information, I'm going to begin by using the equal sign, and then you see the variable count. I'm going to go ahead and type that in here, count, and then I'm going to use multiplication, which is asterisk, and then I'm going to use 0.1 for an added 10%. I want to make sure I'm applying that to the line item, and you can see that 10% of the count would be almost a full cubic yard. And if we had a price in here, let's just use a round number so it's easy to calculate, it's going to take the original count, the extra count, multiply that by $100 to give you the total cost. This is the easiest way to use a formula. Now you can also do simple things like you could come into the extra and just simply put in plus one or equals one. If it's a small project, and then again, if you had the price at $100, it should be very similar in price, giving you a total of $635. Simple project where you only have just over five yards of concrete, and you're just going to use an easy one cubic yard over. Let's take a look at using our tile and countertop information. Materials list use layer sets, and if you look at my current layer set, this is using the materials layer set. I've created a new layer set called the Materials List for Tiles and Counters. If you're interested in knowing how to create a layer set for your materials list, you can watch the Materials List overview video. It talks about the process of doing that. Now when I change the layer set to the Materials List for Tiles and Counters, you can see there are only two elements that are turned on for countertops and backsplashes. I also already have some pricing information in here. And if we review this, this is pretty similar to what we were doing on the foundation. On the extra for the tile on the top row, when I look at the formula, it's using count plus 10%. I put a price in at $45 and it calculates the total cost. If I come down to the third line item, C3, for the countertop, you can see that it's using 37 square feet. I have an extra count, very similar has a price in here and it has totaled it. Let's take a look at opening this up inside the program. So while this row is highlighted, I'm going to come down into the lower edit menu and I'm going to say find object in plan. You can see that object is highlighted and then I'm going to use the open object button. On the polyline panel in here, you're going to see that there is an area calculation. 32.8 and then at the very bottom is a whole area and that's the cutout for the sink. If I were to add those two up that should be pretty close to my square footage. I'm going to show you how that gets rounded here in a minute. When you come over to the component information, this information is being transferred to the materials list and vice versa. It's dynamic. Any update you put in one will update the other. You can see on my count, I've actually put dot seal, as in ceiling. That rounds it for the ceiling, and then there is a dot floor. Those are standard Ruby functions. If you want to learn more about Ruby functions, you can do a search on it. I'm not going to get into Ruby functions, but I've rounded it up using that standard function. That way, I get 37 square feet. If I were to take that function off, you can see that that rounding would then give me a number like this. If it's important to you, you can put in that dot seal and it will round it up for you. You see the extra? 
Again, that came from the materials list. And then if I come down into the labor panel, you can see that I've got it at $50 per square feet. And if I go back into the materials list, you can see that I don't currently have the labor column displayed. So I'm going to turn that labor column on, come over into the columns, down to labor, turn on the labor column, and now you can see that the $50 per square feet is coming in here, and then that's being added to the total. If you wanted to change the total column, you can kind of see down below my mouse is hovering that formula. If you double click in here, you could come in and modify that formula. Let me just scroll all the way over so you can see the formula count plus extra times price and then plus the labor calculation. And if I just zero that out and remove that, it's going to calculate that separately. And then if I wanted to come over and maybe calculate the labor off into the column in the comment panel and I might just say this is the labor cost and then I'm just borrowing these two extra fields just for the demonstration purposes then I could come in to this label panel I'm going to paste in the value and instead of using price I'm just going to times that by the labor and so I've separated the labor cost out from the total cost of the material and I've overridden the default formula for the total cost formula by just double clicking and modifying that formula. One last thing I want to take a look at is using the formula and applying it to the object. Currently we have two of the tiles for the herringbone on each of the backsplashes that total up to nine, four on one and five on another. And let's say that you're going to be purchasing these based on a box count. And maybe they come in a box count of four. And if I wanted to come in and do this based on a box quantity, let's just come in here. I'm going to use this field for the comment. I'm just going to type in box quantity. And then on the labor panel, I want to put a formula in here. I'm a little unsure of how to format that. So I'm just going to come over and take a look at what the formula is here. And that's coming out of the formula that's giving us material quantity. I'm going to copy that. And I'm just going to paste it over here. And then I'm going to use the divide by 4, or whatever the box quantity is. And let's just make sure we're applying that to the source objects. And you can see that it's giving us a box count for each one. Now as I wrap up the video segment here, let's just review and make sure the difference between these apply functions. Currently there are two functions. You can apply it to the line item or the source object. If I change this to line item, this is going to give me an evaluation error because it's looking at the line item and that line item doesn't exist in here it's actually the material so I actually need to change that to the source object and that way it will calculate correctly. If you find that you've come into a formula and you've applied that incorrectly, if I change that to the source object, it will give you that evaluation error. Just be sure typically most of the time you're going to be applying it to the line item and that's the difference by applying that formula either to the line item or to the object itself.